Okay. <clears throat> so in here, let me just escape and undo here. Okay. So you have this thing uh, selected, right? Yeah. And if you want to move it, yeah. you you can click on the border, right? But if you click yeah. inside, you're going to do something like this, right? Yeah. We don't want to do that. We just want to grab the green outline. Yeah. In fact, you can see your cursor change, and yeah. that's a that's a yeah. that's a clue. Okay. okay. So instead of doing that, because it's going to shift to all my cells, you can you can actually prevent it from doing that by okay. typing a dollar sign in front of the cells. But but instead instead, I'm just going to copy all the stuff up in the up in the formula bar, and Control C, right? Control and then tap the C and let go of the control, and then hit Escape, get out of that cell, highlight this cell, and Control V for paste. Tap that. And does the same thing, right? So now I have an actual duplicate of the formula without changing the cell values, which is what I wanted. So I'm going to oh, double click in it. And instead of E2, I'm going to go F2. Right? And see, how it even highlights the cell. Now, instead of using kilometers, I'm going to use the miles one, uh, radius, average radius of the Earth in miles. And everything else is totally fine. So there. So now I have. The conversion factor we looked up on Google, right, is, <laughs> is there. Uh, so I take that miles. Although, you know, reasonably, I, I certainly could have, could have just taken that distance and multiply it by 0.6, you know, <laughs> just instead of all that, right? It would have been a little um, more elegant, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> right? Mm. So if you highlight all that, Control C. Well, actually, let's do it the other way. It's, I'm going to delete this. All that work. I'm going to type in equals that times the 0.6237471 or something. So, so the original distance or the new one? The original. When I tried to do the new one, it was false. Oh. Um, so I would undo until it's not false anymore and then try it again. Oh. There it is. And I can get the same number without having to copy and paste that formula, right? <laughs> yeah, I like that method way better. It does less computation. More elegant. It's faster. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to back up because mine says point oh four. There's not the two in that. Oh well. Okay. Um. So does mine. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> because the. Oh two. Oh gotcha. Right. I mean, I could, I right, could stretch right. it out or whatever. But. So as far as formatting cells go, that's actually a good point. Um, if I want to format this, this is, you know, this is misleading, is what it is. Because, I, you know, I'm going to six decimal places. Well, I know it's not that accurate. <laughs> right? So we'll, we'll talk about how many decimal places we should go. But just for fun, Control-1 uh, opens up the Format Cells box. Although you could go to this number right here. You could click on Number Format and get to that same box. But control one is is more um, uh, power user ish, <laughs> if, if you want to call it that. Anyway, so number, and I can set how many decimal places. I'm going to go to zero decimal places just because I'm not I'm not going to be within a mile. So maybe we'll see. So there. Can you select the D D three again? Oh, so it's just D2, which is the distance in kilometers times the miles to, or kilometers to miles conversion. There we go. Cool. 
Yeah. Say what? So can I just hand type in the, the um, F2? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, if you want. It's just, you could just type in the number or the formula either way. So you can say E2, E2. Yeah. Do you type in? You can. I mean, can you just click in E2? You could. And then <laughs> either way, it. either way. And then what? Times, right, which is an asterisk. But on the keypad, you have your divide, times, minus, and plus all in the right up, up the upper corner there, right? And then enter. Yep. So I don't have to type in that number. No. Well, you do have to type in the 0. 0.62, like the E2 times that number, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you should get like what? What do you get? Thirty something. Thirty yeah. Okay. Okay, I got it. Cool. You're gonna do the same thing over here. Let's just do that and take d two times that number, and that'll convert the actual measured distance that we got times the conversion to get it to miles. Um, yeah, you can't make any legal documents out of it. <laughs> yeah. So, this graphic we're doing here is different. Um, no, the only, well, I mean, the, the only difference would be if um, that the mapping we're doing here isn't legally bound binding. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. really it. I mean, the process. So you think of a binding either have to be a surveyor or an engineer or go through one of them with these samples. Yeah. Okay. And and as far as the other thing would be accuracy, right? I mean, surveyors can use equipment that's going to be more accurate. I mean, we have a surveying class in which we use that equipment, but in here we we're not going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're probably going to want to have their own quarters marked. Mm -hmm. Well, and they do. And we can use those. Yeah. Times that same conversion factor, the 0.62 right there. That guy. Okay. I write that down. <laughs> it's in the book too. <laughs> all right, cool. Okay. So That's all right. It didn't? So you just that, right? Okay. So uh, let's actually do some measuring in Google Earth. Well, let's pick two points in Google Earth first. All right. So let's uh, just pick two points, some nice ones. Anybody have a place you want to go? Four corners. All right. Okay. Yeah. Four corners. Florida. <laughs> Is there a four corners? There's not. Not for states, anyway. Well, 
Let's see what it gives us. Oh, whatever. Okay, I'm just going to go over here. Um, let me turn off the grid here. Control L. Now I can see this. Say what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's the monument. And according to it's kind of hard to see that state line, but it's right there, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I double so I double clicked on that, right? And it zooms in and it centers it, which is important. Then I'm going to add, so I want the latitude and longitude, right? So I could hover my cursor over that corner. So is it doing that because it's such an angle where it shot that picture? Oh, no. Well, um, it should be right over the center. Yeah, it's probably in the way they reference the imagery, right? So like they, they fly in a plane or, you know, this is probably aerial imagery. Yeah, it's definitely aerial imagery. And they fly in it and it's not always perfectly accurate, right? So I think I would trust the actual boundary lines over their drape putting the imagery on the on the globe, right? Okay. It seems like, well, like we say, vector is corrector and raster is vaster, but we want <laughs> so I'm gonna stick with the vector data, which is the actual lines that that are listed here. I mean, yeah. So I double click on that monument, which looks like it is, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but it's right at the intersection of the, of the lines there. So by double clicking, it centers it and I don't move and I'm going to add a place mark. And that place mark puts it right at where I centered it. And then I could go to where a uh, view. Well, it tells me right here. I don't have to go to any of these. It tells me the latitude and longitude right there. So those are the numbers. In fact, I can just copy and paste them. I don't want that little, what you call it, um, thing, degree symbol. So I'm going to copy that, toggle over here. And I'm going to paste in these values, just toggling over. OK. Are we OK? What? On uh, and Google Earth? Yeah. Let's talk about degrees, minutes, and seconds, right? Because we can, what I typed in, what I'm seeing here is just a decimal number, decimal degrees. So we call it, yeah. But so now, now, these are the numbers. Yeah, so now copy I it and then go to Excel and paste it. Okay, okay. So, so here we go. Okay. I like that question again. So, um, except for recording, it's like, <laughs> um, we know there are 360 degrees in a full turn, right? 
And then um, we, can, we can break that down into tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and, and decimal form, right? So like 1.5 degrees is one and a half degrees, right? <laughs> okay, but, but um, it, it's also broken down into minutes and seconds. And as it turns out, uh, it's, have you ever gotten a, a um, what do you call it? A prescription from the doctor where it says, <laughs> let me see. If it, where it says, Let me put this over here. I think I can actually look this up. When a doctor tells you how often to take a medicine or something. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so a doctor might write, let me see if I can see this. Um, yeah, you might say take, um, you know, two caps or some capsules or something like that. Um, and every uh, 24 hours. So this little symbol here, that guy right there, is an hour symbol as well as a degree symbol. It's the same symbol, right? And so um, degrees and time have a lot to do with each other. So in fact, 24 hours is one full rotation of the Earth. So there's some stuff going on <laughs> with all that. Anyway, anyway, so um, let's think of hours, minutes, and seconds, and degrees, minutes, and seconds as as pretty much the same thing because well hours and degrees are kind of have the same symbol so we can make that logical connection I suppose so uh, let's see one hour is equal to what 60 minutes right and I could say okay let me put this under here so one minute though is equal to 60 seconds. So we got that. So as far as, um, let me put this in, uh, so degrees, minutes is a single tick and seconds is a double tick. Okay. So um, if one minute is 60 seconds, what's 60 minutes? That'd be nice to know. What's 60, yeah, what's 60 minutes and seconds? I mean, 60 minutes is one, one degree or one hour, right? So how many seconds, okay, 60 seconds in a minute. So 60 minutes is, yeah, it's 60 times 60. So yeah, 3,600 seconds. So one hour, 3,600 seconds. Okay, so if I have, if I go back to Google Earth here, well, let's just, let's just give it a number here. So what was your number? Like what, what number are you seeing there in latitude or something? You're seeing probably yeah, 30. It's, uh, 36 degrees, 59 minutes, 56.77 seconds north. 36.77? Yep. So it's going to be written like that, right? So uh, what do you do with it? Well, I could take 36 plus 59 60ths. That fraction is going to give me how many hours or how many degrees, 59 minutes will be. Does that make sense? We're okay with that? Okay. And I could, furthermore, furthermore. Yeah, it's going to be real close to one, isn't it? I mean, it's almost 37 degrees. <laughs> okay. So, and then 59, and then I have 36.77. Over what? What do you think? 
how many seconds in an hour? I'm, you know, I just want to know, yeah, over 3,600. So if I add all that up, I'm going to get 36, whoops, 36 point nine nine maybe something 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 nine nine zero nine 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 zero nine okay there you go and that's degrees we can show that on a calculator let's uh let's show that back to okay so calculator time right here's a calculator so uh 36 plus um 59 divided by 60 plus 36.77 divided by 3600 that's what i would do to get the number, right? So I should get 36.99909, right? Or something. <clears throat> well, I guess it should be that. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it depends. It depends on how accurate you want to be with it, but yeah. A hundredth of a second is pretty accurate. Yeah, it could be. It could be that far off, but it's like a good one. Perfect. Yeah, and it depends on how far your, your distance is, too, if you're off that much. So on the Earth, typically, right, one degree, say you're on the equator and you're going east or west, one degree is about 111 kilometers. So let's look at that. Um, yeah, let's go back to here. Okay, so if I'm going to, let's see. Um, so one degree is approximately 111 kilometers. We're gonna stick with kilometers right now, but we'll can convert that to miles easy enough. Multiply it by your point, whatever. <laughs> okay, so, so one, um, one minute, is about equal to 111, 111 kilometers divided, well, a minute, so 60, right? So a minute, well, that would be 60 um, um, minutes per degree, right? Per degree. And that's kilometers per degree. So the degrees will kill each other, and then I, you know, the minutes cancel out over here, and so I'm left with kilometers, right? So just, do I have my calculator stuff? Okay, so 111 divided by 60. So 1.85 kilometers. Okay. So back over here, 1.85 kilometers. Okay, and what about a second? That was kind of what we were just talking about, right? So a second, how much is a second not worth or whatever? So that's uh, equal to a 60th of 1.87. Yeah, right? So um, get this pen back here. So I'm going to take, I could take 111 kilometers over 3,600 or just divide the other number since I rounded it, this is probably a more accurate number anyway, but it's not that accurate anyway, so. All right, let's go back to the calculator. Um, 111, so clear it out, divided by 3,600, and I get that. So um, instead of kilometers, what about like meters? Could I, let's see what this is in meters, right? So that's a thousand, right? So times is a thousand. So 30 meters. So this is actually important because if you, when we're downloading like satellite data, usually satellite data or elevation types of data that was gathered by a satellite, you're going to see uh, data represented in arc seconds, like that's its resolution, 
right? So the tiles, the pixels, or the cells cover this much on the ground. So if it says, oh, that when we were in RGIS, you kind of said pixels. Yeah, yeah, you could measure the pixels directly, really. Yeah. And, that, and that's what they do when they when they when you're downloading data. They you're going to look at how accurate or how fine the resolution is of the data. And one of the measures is uh, they'll just call it one arc second. They'll just say it's one arc second data, right? Which means 30 meter pixels, right? So 30 meters by 30 meters. That, that's how big those tiles are, or the, not tiles, they're the cells, which is good for covering large areas, but not for, <laughs> you know, not for construction sites or something like that, but, you know, for vegetation or I don't know what, you know, uh, um, climate change kind of stuff like world cover or even, yeah, yeah. Um, you'll, you'll see a third arc second, which would be 10 meters. And a ninth arc second, which would be like three meters. So there you go. So just to give you a feel for, you know, one second, 30 meters, right? So a hundredth of a second, eh, a third of a meter, right? So a foot. At work, I would usually go to ask if it's a number from degrees, or from degrees in a second to degrees. Yeah. And I never do the equation. Like, what a Google conversion. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. in Excel, you could make your own. So. Yeah. But but also yeah yeah so um back here. I don't know if I'm recording that. Maybe I should stop that. Yeah. Stop and then reshare the screen. Okay, so we can, so Laverna can see it or whoever. Okay, so um, let's cancel this. I'm not going to zoom still. I'm still um, going to add a place mark, but instead of, I can go to tools and options and you can pick what kind of units you want to use, right? So there's degrees, minutes, and seconds, right under decimal degrees. So those are the two most common ones anyway. So, okay. And then I'll add my place mark. And then it goes to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So easy, easy does it. Well, if, um, well, to answer uh, Michelle's question, I don't really want that because we're going to do calculations on it in Excel, right? So okay. decimal degrees is way better <laughs> for calculating. Yeah, we would have to change the whole deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So at some point around the Earth, is, is it um, better off to have it in decimal degrees or have it in degrees in a second? Or is it not that matter? Um, decimal degrees for most purposes, like calculation, if you're gonna like find distances and bearings and stuff like that, you're gonna use decimal, decimal degrees. Now, uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds are used for display purposes, like labeling bearings and stuff like that. Um, sometimes, like we have some surveying equipment that actually will uh, record in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So if you're doing GPS satellite programming, it's gotta be in well, since it can be converted, um, any electronic unit can can do it for you, right? Yeah. So you can set the setting there. No, what I'm saying is, is one more than the other. Uh, but it just depends on the application. Yeah, 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 good. But decimal degrees is better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's used more, I would say, but, but for prettiness, I would say. Anyhow, yeah. And I would even consider, I would go as far as saying that, um, that degrees, minutes, and seconds is sort of a legacy, just because that's what they used when they had physical equipment that just had a compass on it, and 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 the, they were gradated, yeah, graduated. Most of, our, um, most of our survey class that we have in office, my department, some of them are in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Some of them are in degrees. Yeah. And like, if they want to be real precise, I can imagine you being so precise as to go far in decimal you know, degrees. Yeah, it's easier to, to humanly, for humans, to conceptualize degrees, minutes, and seconds because you can, because they already have. I mean, it's just a legacy thing where 
I already know, you know, one second is about 30 meters. So that helps me conceptualize what, you know, what kind of accuracy I'm looking at and, you know, what, what I'm dealing with. But as far as computations go, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you'll find yourself converting a lot anyway. So. All right. Um, so I got this one. So I'm going to click OK on this. Actually, well, I'm going to type in the. Um, so I'm going to click in here and highlight it again. It looks highlighted, but unless you click in it and highlight it, when you start typing, all these keyboard shortcuts start. You know, it moves, <laughs> does stuff in in uh, in Google Earth. So I I do that, and that's going to be. I'll just. Yeah, there's my marker, four corners, right? So I'm going to get back to that, but uh, where else do you want to go? To another point that we can measure somewhere. Oops. Over here now. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to put in point B now somewhere. What do we got for point B? What do you want to do? Okay, so point, point A, you have to, it's in. I put the latitude and longitude in decimal degrees, yeah. Okay. Okay. Bangladesh. Okay, here we go. I'm not sure what I clicked on. Uh, you know, I I did Bangladesh. Oh, that's Bangalore. Sorry, I didn't even notice. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Have you seen that video of that guy that was supposed to be reporting from the White House? Uh-uh. They're like, come on over there. He's like, did you tell her it's more than one Washington? <laughs> 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 it was somewhere else. Oh, man. There we go. Dubai. Bangladesh, right? Okay. So, um, I had a place mark here. I'll name it now. And I'll copy and paste these numbers to my point B. Maybe I have the wrong Bangladesh. Well, it's looking on that weird. Are you doing the, oh, you're doing the port, the, the, um, the island, the whole island? Um, yeah, I just centered on it. Um, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. Is that the, like a Bangladesh hotel or something? No, oh, um, that, that, the world island right there on Dubai? Yeah. All those little small things in the middle are named after. Uh, this is the Bangladesh I want. Wow, yeah, I was thinking, wow. I thought it was an Indian room. Okay. So this is better. And uh, what do I want to do? Add a place mark. There we go. Oops. And uh, there's my place mark properties. Pull this back up. Okay. So this number is well.
Okay, so I have a number here, but I want to go back to Google Earth and and do some of my own measuring with a measure tool, right? So the ruler. I don't want to get too ahead of myself here, but um, we're okay with that. What do we get for a number? Oh, that's the radius of the Earth. Oh, uh, 12, uh, 12, 6, 4, 7. Okay. How do you, how do you work like that? So, here. Which one? I, I got zero in there. So, these number, oh, um, okay. So, but you have these numbers populated? Yeah. Okay, so if you double click in them, make sure there aren't any spaces before or after it, because then it'll treat it as text and then it'll be zero. Because, oh. so yeah, there's probably a space in there, and those are like the hidden, hidden ones. I got the same number as you, I put uh, over to 39.991. Nice. Oh, oh, um, that number's wrong, huh? Or is that the right number? No, it's the right number. I put in the wrong number. Because, well, I'm not so sure. Here. Double click on four corners. Let's go back to the four corners for a minute. Well, I don't need to go there. I just go to properties. 39.99. Oh, yeah, okay. So, all right. So I can start the measuring from here anyway. It doesn't matter which way you go, I suppose. <laughs> So I'm going to put the cursor right on the tip there, and I'm within a meter, right? So, and I think, so I'm going to click there, and I'm going to stretch out a line. And then I'm going to go double click on Bangladesh, the real Bangladesh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Can't really see that well. Okay, yeah, that, I'm just, that's within. 10 meters, whatever. So I'm going to click. There I go. And so now I can look at the number. And it looks to me like I'm at 12,987. So that's the map length. And then we have a ground length, which should be a little bit more considering it, it uses, it, it follows the curvature of the Earth. Well, they both do. Well, actually, How could you? they don't. The map length should be a flattened length. So is that how you can prove to a flat earther that there's a difference? <laughs> I suppose. I don't know. I don't know if you can convince anybody that wants to believe that it's flat. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it was Archimedes or someone that first used the map for the globe. No. Could be, could be. Yeah, I think they knew that a long time ago. <laughs> and then there was a So um, we're going to use, uh, well, really, it should be. So these two numbers don't really do what uh, our Excel sheet's doing. Our Excel, Excel sheet is um, just using the curvature of the Earth at, on the ellipsoid, right? It's actually not even the ellipsoid. It's treating it as a sphere. So it's actually a spheroidal distance using using um, the formula in the book, those are all just cosines and sines and stuff. That's circular, right? So we're talking great circles, not ellipses and things like that. So um, I would expect those numbers to be a little bit different. So 12,961 versus 12,987 or 12,989. So it's about, what, 20, 20 something kilometers off? 61, so 20, 28 kilometers off. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what kind of accuracy is that, right? So an accuracy is just the difference over what the measure is, right? So if I take, uh, what did I say, 28? Yeah. So 28 divided by 12,961. Right, <clears throat> and that's uh, well. An easy way to do that is flip that over, right? So that's a 
0.002, like that's two thousandths or, um, or a thousand over two, which would be like 500 over one. So if I flip this over, yeah, 462. So that's a 462 to one uh, accuracy ratio. Yeah, you know, it's not bad. Yeah, that's 0.2%. That's, uh, if you want to do percentage, that's nice too. But this way, it basically that says for every um, 462.89 or whatever kilometers, I'll be one kilometer off. Okay, Michelle, what was your question? That will get to your question. My distance, I just have number values. And then. Wait, you have what? I just have number values. I, I'm oh. trying to get caught up, so I'm going to start that one first. Okay, so you, you do have this formula in here, though, right? I do. Um, uh, it's that big old formula we did last time? <laughs> if you double click in it, you should see this stuff. If I double click in this one. Okay, and maybe there's an error. To what, so what were you doing to catch up? What what did you have to do? Uh, I was doing the degrees and how long in the last, and I was getting caught up. And then you. Oh, okay. So I didn't see it. Okay, so I don't think the problem is the formula. Um, I would look, and so these these are numbers. Yes. One way you can tell if it's not testing is widen the columns out, and they should yes. be right justified. Are they? Right justified meaning they're to, they're stuck to the right. <laughs> That's one way to tell the difference between text and a number in Excel is numbers are right justified and te no, text is left justified. So if you have an extra space or something and it's treating it as text, then it'll be left justified. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, so yeah, if there's one left justified, click in it and then take out the space, probably, that's in there. So, I want to align left. No, we don't care about the alignment. Well, I mean, the alignment reveals that something's wrong, um, but you need to just take out the, 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 the space. There's probably a space in there before or after it, probably before. Yeah, That's it's all, it's all the, um, left of the Okay, so double click in there and take out your space in the number. Yeah. Up there? Well, either way, either way. Okay, um, okay. One thing is um, if you, yeah, an easy way to do this is just click once in it, I guess. Okay. And then go up to the top bar okay. and then click in that bar to the right of it. To the right. Yeah, and then you should see a cursor flashing right immediately after the last number. Yes, there's okay. a degree. Oh, take that out. Yeah, you don't want that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's probably what's doing. My numbers don't quite Oh, that's okay. That's yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. And so, and then click uh, right immediately, put the cursor immediately before the first yes. character, and then backspace. If there's any character, if there's any space in there, it'll take that out. Oh. If, if, if there is. I don't know if okay. there is. But. Oh, and then just hit enter. Be sure to hit enter. And then go to the next one and do the same thing. Click, see my cursor's off to the right. And if, and if the flashing cursor goes immediately after it, that means there's no spaces after that number. You know what I mean? Ah, no, but there's um, Take out the degree, for sure. Yeah, there was the degree. And so you can even arrow over and then see if I keep arrowing and the cur cursor stays immediately left of it, then I know that there's a number, you know, that there's no spaces in that. Oh, oh, I see. So, yeah, that's one way to do it. Okay, so, and then just... Yeah, and hit enter when you're done. And then, yeah, I bet it was.
Well, it doesn't recognize that as some sort of unit. It just sees that as text. <laughs> okay. So then it still says value. And what's in there? Um, value is, now that is the problem with the formula, I think. It says the number sign and then value as my, my whole formula disappeared out of here. Oh, really? Okay. Let's. Okay, we're going to. Yeah. So, our chapter three map, yeah, will be um, I, what, a good example, anyway, is using uh, ma making a map of an entire state, right? Because we talked about the different states and you know they're shaped differently so they have different coordinate systems associated with them and stuff so um let's take a look at that so um let's just open up a new map yeah chapter three map that's a good one make sure it's going in the right place classes now if you're working off a jump drive you can set up your jump drive to be the the main folder or whatever if you want Right? Yeah. At this point. So this way, you don't have to copy and paste. You can just work off your junk drive all the time. But it would be good to make a backup <laughs> somewhere. So, yeah. Well, we've got this uh, basic map. Yeah. So I'm going to put it in my Chapter 3 folder. It's good enough. And I'm not going to create an extra folder for it. Oh, I already started that, huh? Yeah. Well, I got another one. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm like, why is there one already called that? So, um. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so, we're good. <laughs> okay, so, um, a couple things. We can uh, pick a state, and we'll just use any state as an example, and this is how um, I would we're going to create our own coordinate system for it. Well, we'll adjust the coordinate system for it. So, uh, what do you think? All righty, New Mexico. So we can zoom in on it and stuff. Um, I'm going to like look at just visually get about the center, right? So I'm thinking, you know, a little south of Albuquerque, right? I'm gonna put my cursor there and look at the latitude in, in, the, in the cursor down there, right? And since I have a white balloon, okay. How about I clear that out? Um, I'm going to write this number down. I should do it the other way. I can see it right there. Okay, so uh, with my cursor, yeah, 34.74, let's say. That's going to be uh, my center of the coordinate system, if you will, as far as the up and downness of it, right? The latitude of it. And I'm going to do the same thing with, I'll pull this around. I'm going to look at, um, pull this away. And uh, left to right, it's looking like 106.35, I guess. <laughs> so 106.35 degrees. And that's going to be a negative, I guess, because that's west. 
Or I could say it's west and forget the negative part, but either way, right? Okay. So I'm going to um, stop, pull that away, and go back to my screen. Okay. So left to right, I was looking at 106.35 ish, right? Somewhere around there. And up and down, uh, we had like 34.7 something. Yeah. Okay. So um, now I would look at the top and the bottom and try to like divide that up into fourths, basically. And and I'll explain the reason why in a minute. Um, so I, you know, just visually, halfway in between the half and the top. <laughs> so maybe around here somewhere, like it. 36, let's just say 36. So I'd write that down. And uh, this one's a little tougher because, you know, just visually spacing it, I might go a little bit lower because we have this little pan handle kind of thing down here. So halfway in between there and there, maybe somewhere around, I don't know, 33. Just, it's probably good enough. Okay, so with those numbers, I'm gonna adjust the coordinate system of of our map to be centered on that and and also to um, to make it look right. Okay, so there's two things to happen with this. Yeah, we're gonna do that. But um, we can we can adjust the coordinate system right now. Um, so as far as the coordinate system, we talked about the geoid and the datum and the ellipsoid and things. And so a datum um, is either based on, um, well, it's, it's, it's a fitting of the geoid and the ellipsoid, right? And so um, that's the basis for the projection that happens, okay? There's a few ways to project a coordinate system um, on, on a, onto the, from the earth onto a flat piece of paper, basically, right? So uh, let's see, I think there's actually a good graphic in the book that will help us, help us do that. Let's see, talk about vertical. Yeah. Um, Right, right. Chapter page three? Yes, page 122. The two main ones are cylindrical coordinate systems. So if you can imagine a can of tennis balls, with only one tennis ball in it, the earth, right? Um, and if it was perfectly fit, right? So if you put the earth in a tennis ball can, um, the earth, it would just touch all the way around, right? It would touch all, like at the equator, for instance, okay? So if I were to measure anything on the equator, like, and, and well, I would, I would draw a line or I would project the equator to the can and then cut the can and open it up, right? And I could flatten the can out and it would be perfectly flat, right? Because a cylinder can be flattened to a, to a two-dimensional surface. And that's the idea behind projection is to take a 3D surface, project the points to that 2D surface, in whatever shape it's in, and then flatten it out, and there's your projection. That's your flattening, okay? So the two common ones, as seen on page 122, are conic and cylindrical, right? A cone, like a party hat, can be made out of a flat sheet of paper too, right? So you can put a party hat on the earth and project all around it, okay? Well, um, as you unfold it, um, it gets greatly distorted away from where it touches the earth, right? Well, because it's mathematically doing it that way, you can uh, actually put the cone or the cylinder through the surface where it would actually touch in two places, right? So it's actually slicing the earth. And so it makes it accurate a little bit further, right? So you can increase your accuracy in two places and that overall makes a better area. And so that's why I picked two places uh, uh, off that center. Those will be our, um, 
are places where there's no distortion, right? Okay, so that's the idea. And um, there's different ways to do it. Different states have different things. But as, as far as New Mexico goes, it's using, um, well, its state plane actually uses a UTM, a, a, a cylindrical coordinate system. But we can use a, um, for the whole state, though, maybe a cylindrical one would be fine. So, um, so we're going to start with that. So this is how I'm going to do it. So I have the numbers. And I'm going to double click on map. And I'll go to the map properties. Right? And then there's a coordinate system option, I guess. Tab. I don't know what those are. Items, options. OK. And the default coordinate system for this map with, you know, I haven't changed it. This is the default, right? It's a, it's a web mercator, right? So uh, and you can look at what that is and stuff. But, but I'm just going to uncheck layers. So we can categorize our coordinate systems as favorites. So you can put like favorite coordinate systems in there. Uh, you can just list the layers, right? So there's one layer in here, and that's our, uh, that's our default layer, I guess. <laughs> and then you have uh, GCS, the geographic coordinate systems, which are all latitude, longitude type stuff. And then you have projected. Right, this is the flattened stuff. Okay, so this is the one we want to go to. And then it's categorized as well, so you can go to UTM or continental. Um, I don't think you can, there's no one called conic, but there's a, there's a whole set of them. So, and that's under continental usually. And there's a North America, so the New Mexico is in North America, if you didn't already know that. And then um, you'll notice that um, Alaska has its own little um, setup. Canada has its own setup. Hawaii, uh, the contiguous USA with the NAD 27. So that's the North American datum of 1927 using that, that Clark spheroid of 1866, or ellipsoid, actually. Anyway, uh, we don't want to use that. Um, but there is the generic one down here somewhere. Yeah, there's a couple of them, these conic ones, right? You see at the bottom of, well, it's not even the bottom of the list. There's some um, contiguous, that just means the, the, the lower 48 or whatever, right? The, except Hawaii and Alaska, because they have their own, right? So the contiguous US are the 48 states in DC, I guess. And so you look at uh, what, what their names are, and that's indicative of what kind of projection it is. And so it's a conic, right? All these are conics. Like these albers are, um, are pretty much all conic section, conic projections. But it also has another qualifier here. It says equal area, right? So if I wanted to make a projection where I'm going to compare like uh, water area, you know, lakes and stuff, like the areas of all the lakes in New Mexico or something like that, I would use an equal area one <laughs> because that would reduce the distortion in area. It would preserve the, that uh, property of, of the projection. Some uh, projections will preserve distance. So there's an equidistant one as well. Um, for a nice pretty map, a conformal works pretty well. A conformal keeps the shape accurate. Okay. And then there's there's one that helps with orientation, like keeps directions correct. Doesn't distort those as much. There's no projection that will preserve all four of those properties that we just talked about. Shape, area, distance, direction. Right? So anyway, let's pick uh well. I'm not going to just click OK. Um, I'm going to start with this and then adjust it, right? So I'm going to click on right click on it, and I'm going to copy it and modify it. So I'm going to make I'm going to base my projection on this, but adjust the the where it is. So copy and modify. Now I can I can rename it. So let's try um, 
instead of USA, let's just try New Mexico. How about that? <laughs> NM contiguous Lambert conformal conic. And I'll take out the N stuff. So it's a nice name. Something like that. Um, I don't need to mess with uh, any of this except for the central meridian. I'm going to shift it to what was our center of the US lat longitudinally? Yeah, our center. Where was our center in New Mexico? Well, longitude, right? 106.35, was it? Yeah, right, 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 right. So instead of negative 96, which would be the contiguous US, like I guess 96 is pretty much in the middle of the US. That's interesting. Anyway, um, negative 106.34. Is that what we said? Okay, close enough. <laughs> yeah, it'll look all right. 35. 35. Thank you. All right, standard parallel one. That's the lower part, right? So the standard parallel is where it's slicing through. So the lower part of New Mexico and the upper part of New Mexico. If the cone actually passes underneath the ground, basically, and 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 touches at these la uh, latitudes. Um, well, actually, 33 was one of them, wasn't it? Wasn't 33 the bottom number? 33 and 36. Yeah, and then so my standard parallel here is 36. So nice. Um, yeah, latitude of origin. That was 34 something. Which is roughly halfway in between these, I, I would think. In fact, if you want to, you could probably just, what is that? That's a difference of three degrees, so one and a half, so 37 and a half. I mean, 34 and a half. So I'm going to use 34 and a half. I trust the numbers more than my eyes, right? To, <laughs> to just eyeball it and say, it's all right, that's right there. So um, that's good. That's good. And the rest of it, so all I did was take that cone and shift it around a little bit. Good enough? And I renamed it. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to right click it and add to my favorites. So now, I'll click OK. Did you write the anywhere? No, on the, on the coordinate system I just made. Let me go back. I'm sorry. No, that's OK. So um, yeah. yeah, where's my favorites here? Uh, yeah, here. So it's already in my favorites, but if you right click, you can remove from favorites. <laughs> Uh, or or it'll say so if I right click on any of these right yeah yeah, yeah. okay and then okay yep okay so if I zoom out it's gonna you know kind of get the world a little wacky it's gonna look different right so there's the cone being flayed out right so I opened up the cone and flattened it so that doesn't work for a lot of the U S and the other countries you know like if this would be horrible for Africa. I would not want to use this coordinate system in Africa because, you know, it totally ruins the direction <laughs> because it's and stuff and, and, and distorts it wildly, I suppose. Um, so anyway, but you zoom in on New Mexico and it looks pretty good. It's all right. Okay. So let's look at some data. Now that I have the coordinate system right, what if I have, and, and I do, in the, in the class data folder, and I'm not connected to it, so I'm going to connect to the class data folder as well so I can get some data out of this. So add a folder connection. And I'm going to go to the class data folder, right? 
click on it, and okay. So in the class data folder, there's a chapter three folder, and there should be, should be, a US states somewhere in here. Yeah, there's a US states shapefile. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that into the map. Now, instead of, normally, you would right click on that and copy it and then paste it into your own folder, but not yet, not yet. I'll show you why. Yeah, right click on folders and add folder connections and then just browse to that class data folder. Um, yes, yes, it is. So the classes, Gonzo classes, yeah. And then GIST 115, and then there's a class data folder. Okay. Um, oh, there's a chapter three folder in there. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you go in there, <laughs> that's where we're looking. <laughs> Thank you. And so yeah, if you scroll down, there's a US states shapefile. And so we're just going to drag it into the map. Say what? Well, it's just, oh, you got to click on it. Yeah. Um, the U.S. states. If you look in that chapter three folder, there's a U.S. states shape file which we know is multiple files it, it's in it's in the chapter three folder in the class data folder yeah it's it's not even alphabetized all that well for some reason no Okay, so a point shape file or feature class is going to be, a shape file is going to be green and have these points in it. A feature class is going to be silver or gray, right? So a line a shape file is going to be green and have these lines in it. And a polygon one is going to look kind of hard to tell. It's going to have dots in it. It's going to, um, let me see if I can draw it. Something like that, I guess. And then it'll have centroids marked in it. It'll look something like that. <laughs> okay, so those are polygons, right? So polygons. Lines. And points. So if you were like, could you rows would be on underlined pretty much? Yeah, yeah. And the points would just be like points. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or look just points of interest. There's a lot of or places, just just where the centroid locations would be. So yeah, um a, you know, Farmington would be a point in a world map, maybe, right? But it would be a polygon in a Farmington map <laughs> or something, right? So it depends on the scale of the map too, huh? So that's interesting. And a river, likewise, a river would be a line feature in like a state map, maybe, or it'd be a polygon in a Farmington map, right? So, so yeah, those are, those are good. Okay, all right, so back to the resume. Okay. I think I'm sharing the right screen. I hope it records okay. Okay, so um, we're focused on New Mexico because we set up our coordinate system for that. So since we did, I'm gonna select New Mexico with my select tool. So if I go back to the map and just click on this tool. Now there's, there's other configurations of this tool, but the rectangle tool is the easiest one. There's a lasso, line, trace, polygon, but rectangle is easy, right? That allows you to click once and highlight something, right? Select it. Or you can click and drag 
and whatever it, you know, whatever you click and drag over, it uh, selects. Right? I can deselect by clicking clear up in the menu, or right, or by just clicking away from everything. Sometimes that's not so easy. You have to zoom out and click away, you know, where there's no data. But anyway, there's New Mexico selected, right? Okay, so I, I really don't want all the other states, right? And that's why I selected this one. It's also called isolating, but I call it selecting, and so does ArcGIS. Arc so I'm gonna go to data with that selected. The only thing I'm gonna do here is go to data and export features. With just that guy selected, just that one New Mexico selected, it'll only export that one. <laughs> so that's what I want. If nothing selected, it'll export everything. Okay, something selected, it'll select it. It doesn't say that anywhere, but that's what it does. Okay, so the input features are the US states. The input is the data that you have, what you're gonna extract from it, basically. The output location. Now here's where I'm gonna put it in the default geo database. So a feature, it'll be converted basically to what's called a feature class. For all intents and purposes right now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So it's, it's all good. A geodatabase is more functional, so it's nice to do that, I guess. So um, it's already in the correct location, so that's nice, and I'll just call it NM, right? NM bound, because maybe I'll have some other data, right? So bound, so for New Mexico boundary, I try to keep my file names kind of small, that way I don't have to type as much. And I think they even have a, a limit on the, well, I guess they don't, but sometimes that can run into problems. Okay. Oh, well, it it can, but don't, right? Okay. <laughs> because because it's a geodatabase, a lot of, you know, it'll break a lot of tools if you try to do something with that data. So if you just have a habit of never putting spaces in the file names or folder names, um, then you you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> So good, good question. Wait, uh, I'm not done yet. In under environments, this is where I set up my output coordinate system to the current map instead of the state's data. The states has this uh, Mercator one. The current map, however, has my custom one. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the coordinate system that we just made, that we customized. So there we go. And I don't have to mess with the rest of it, so I'll just click OK. And watch what happens. That's so fun watching that. It's like grass growing. Okay, so I'm done. So I can uncheck US states or just right click and remove it. Right? And now um, this, this feature class, the only one I have here, is in, let me roll this stuff up here. It's actually in my home folder and look for the can, there's my chapter three map, there's my New Mexico bound, that's where it is. So it adds it to the map for you, but it puts it in this geodatabase, the geodatabase is this white can, cylinder, right? A container, it's like Tupperware, for your feature classes, as well as some other things like a lot of other things. Did that work? Got it? No? Okay. Let me pause here. So yeah, we're out of time right now. So we'll add some data to this and pick this up again on uh, Monday. Yeah. So save the project, which is kind of nice because we've already set where it is. And you just save it and close it, right? There it is. Okay. What? How can I save it to my garage? Um, did you did you do that when you set up the map? Did you use your jump drive? I got it in right now. You have to put it onto it, right? Yeah. So when you start, well, you don't have to, but it's easier. <laughs> so, okay. if you uh, start the map. Like when you start a new map, let's just, um, okay. 
if I start a new map here, this this box right here allows me to name it and tell and and set the location, right? That could be your jump drive at this point. If you didn't do that, then you um you can copy the folder, which is which is the next thing to do, right? So if you want to take this home, right? Then I have like this one. I could just go to my folder and I would go to my classes and I would go to right where it is my chapter three folder. I would just take this chapter three folder, right click, copy it, and then go to my jump drive and paste it. And then I got the whole folder with the project and the data with the right coordinate system and everything in it. That's all. That's it.